Good morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, Salem Police Searching for Robbery Suspect. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Hi, I'm Ryan Hayes. And I'm Patrick Hayes, Jr. And I'm Patrick Hayes, Sr. And my boys and I would like to help you protect your home forever with a new metal roof. Forever metal roof? Well, Sharice, we spoke with the employee who was working alone when this man came walking through the front door. She declined to go on camera, but is doing okay despite the ordeal she went through. It was around 7.30 Friday night when Salem police say this man walked into Modern Tan on Main Street. But he wasn't looking for some extra vitamin D. Instead, money was on his mind, and authorities say he was determined to do anything to get it. He threatened the clerk behind the counter to open the register. After some back and forth with the woman behind the counter, the suspect pulls out a hypodermic needle, which was filled with an unknown substance. Luckily, the employee was not hurt. Although she had to go through a scary situation, authorities say it could have been worse. In terms of the needle, it carries communicable diseases. We don't know what it was loaded with. It could have been loaded with any, any type of drug. Um, so clearly it, it poses a, a risk to the victim if somebody were to be stabbed with that. The suspect eventually got his hands in the register, grabbed some cash, and took off. The business was still open. I think it was getting ready to close, but there are other businesses in the area that were still open as well. Officers later responded to the scene. A canine unit was called in to track him down. However, we were unable to locate him. We believe that he had a vehicle waiting for him nearby. Police are now hoping this surveillance video will lead to an arrest. In the meantime, they say the employee did the right thing by eventually giving the suspect what he came for. We don't suggest getting involved in any altercation. Just follow your business protocol and just give them what they're asking for. And now we do have that surveillance video over on our website. If you'd like to take a second look, if you do know who this man is, or even if you saw anything suspicious around the salon Friday night, Salem police say they want to hear from you. Reporting live in Salem tonight, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Again, if you recognize that person, call Salem police. Clearly targeted man shot, killed while sitting in SUV in Boston. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. Well, Duke Nicole, police just removed the crime tape out here from the scene. They are now asking for the public's help, trying to figure out who pulled the trigger. Police say they got a call just before 4 o'clock here on Edmond Street for a person shot. When they got here, they found a man in his 30s shot in the head inside a red Ford Escape. He was pronounced dead here at the scene. Police believe that this was a targeted incident. They say that someone drove up to the SUV this afternoon and fired shots into the car. Right now, it's not clear if there were any other people in the car at the time. There was another deadly shooting yesterday in Dorchester, both happening in broad daylight. Police do not believe they're connected. This individual looks to be late 30s. Um, who's deceased in the vehicle, um, and obviously uh, we, we're um, processing the scene. It's a very active scene, but, you know, that's two in the last two days. So it's obviously troubling, and, you know, again, uh, you know, we all got to step up. I know we've taken 160 guns off the street um, in three months. Uh, we need the community to help us. 
Police have not identified the victim at this time. They are looking at surveillance video in the area to see if they can get a better look at the car involved. If you have any information that can help, you're asked to call Boston Police. For now, we're live in Dorchester, Dining Show, WCDB News Center 5. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Death of husband, wife appear as murder, suicide. State police said the death of a husband and wife in Nordrick on Saturday appear to be a murder, suicide. Police said 62-year-old William Hale and his wife, 58-year-old Maria Lancaster Hale, were found dead inside their home on Route 2. Also found dead was the family dog, police said. All appear to have died from gunshot wounds and were found in the home's laundry room, according to authorities. Police said Hale initially called the Summerrest County Sheriff's Office just after 7 a.m. and reported there would be two bodies inside his home when deputies arrived. Hale also said there would be an elderly person at the home who would need care, police said. Hale's 87-year-old mother, Faye Hale, who also lived at the home, was found unharmed sitting in a car in the driveway, police said. Police said Hale had a assisted his mother to the car before he returned to the home to shoot himself. Police said they recovered both a handgun and shotgun from inside the house. The bodies were taken to the state medical examiner's office in Augusta for examination. Shooting of unharmed black man by Sacramento police sparks another day of protest. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Tom Yamas, and we begin tonight with the growing calls for justice in downtown Sacramento following the police shooting of an unarmed black man. Protests ramping up for more than a week as California's capital faces new turmoil over the shooting of Stefan Clark. An independent autopsy ordered by the family found the 22-year-old was shot eight times, mostly in the back. The family claiming those results contradict what police have said about Clark advancing on them in a threatening manner that night. A caution for our viewers, the images you're about to see are disturbing. ABC Zachary Keish is in Sacramento and starts us off. In the presence of Stefan Clark's kids and family. Because it ain't just our pain, it's their pain. Protesters with a message to police. Stop killing unarmed black men like this father of two. Last night, hundreds gathered, at one point, some facing off with police. Nobody speak, moment of silence for everybody who's lost their life to somebody who was supposed to protect them. The protest, coming just hours after an independent autopsy commissioned by the Clark family, claimed the unarmed 22-year-old was hit by eight bullets, including six to the back. The findings of his autopsy contradict many of the narratives that the Sacramento police put forward. 
On the night of the shooting, Sacramento police trailed Clark, believing he was behind reports of vandalism in the area. They say they fired at him after he, quote, turned and advanced towards two officers while holding an object which was extended in front of him. Police later finding only a cell phone. Retired NBA journeyman and longtime Sacramento King Matt Barnes, hosting today's rally, was with his own two sons when news of Clark's death was announced and says it was a teachable moment. Not all cops are bad, but all, not all black people are guilty. The autopsy not far from the minds of those in attendance. This is tearing the community apart, and I, I, I want to see it get better. Zachary Keese joins us live now outside the Golden One Center in the Sacramento area where protesters have blocked fans from entering two NBA games in recent days. And Zachary, there's a game tonight and a heavy police presence. Tom, there is a presence here tonight. There was a pro-police protest that was scheduled tonight that has been canceled. Now, police aren't commenting about the findings of that independent autopsy, and it could be months before the county releases theirs. Tom? Zachary Keese leading us off tonight. Zachary, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that did it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.